Hi everyone and welcome to another very exciting tutorial and of course Happy New Year, this is the first tutorial in 2018 and what we are going to do today is having a look at RX Swift, Reactive Swift and many people have wished for a tutorial about that stuff and it's really exciting so let me just give you a quick look at the demo application that we are going to build. In this application it's a very simple application. We have kind of a hello user label here um, that just reads a character or a user and imagine that we could select a character here in this character chooser and we could either be a chicken, a dog or a goat and I'm going to go with a chicken so I select the chicken and I go back and it says hello chicken. Very simple stuff and you could do that with a delegate pattern as well. But today I'm going to show you how you can do that with Rx Swift. But what I intend with this tutorial is to give you kind of a practical example what you can do with Rx Swift because you might are coming from the documentation or some other tutorial that gave you an introduction into what are observables or what is a sequence or um, what is a subject and so on but you haven't maybe figured out how this all comes together and they could, there could be tons of other examples but I'm going to do something that is really useful if you um, for example need to communicate with another view controller and you'd like to transfer data from one view controller to another. So let me show you the starter project for this tutorial. So once you downloaded the starter project from the video description below, what you will get is a simple folder with an Xcode project and a pod file. And a pod file is associated with CocoaPods, which is a neat way to install third-party libraries. If you don't know how CocoaPods works or if you haven't installed that on your machine, then head to CocoaPods.org and you get a simple install guide and once you did that, you can come back here. So let me first of all open up our project here for a second and what we have here is really, really simple. So what we have here is a non-RX Swift version of this application. So we can still open up the character selector. We can choose another character like the goat and uh, we're going to greet hello goat. And what we did that with a simple delegate pattern. So let me just give you a quick tour of this project. First of all, very simple user interface. We have our storyboard here, we have a master view controller, we have a detail view controller, and they are not connected with a segue, but instead what we have here is a storyboard ID for our second view controller, the detail view controller, and I am instantiating this view controller right here um, when we click on the select character button, which is this one here, which is a bar button item. And once we click on that, we're instantiating a view controller with this identifier detail view controller, and we're setting the delegate, more about that in a second, and then we push this view controller um, to our navigation controller. Using our navigation controller we push to this second view controller. So this is how we can get from this view controller to this one. Very simple and easy stuff. And in the detail view controller we have a character delegate protocol which um, has one uh, function here defined which is the did select character with a name and according to the delegate pattern what we have to do is create a delegate property here for the detail view controller and once we selected one of these three uh, characters all of these buttons are connected to the same function so we are getting the character's name from the title label of the specific button and if we click on one of these buttons then we're checking if the delegate is set using a flat statement and if so then we call the did select character with a name function and we can listen for this function in our master view controller implementing this function right here function did select character and then change the greetings labels text property to the name of our character so this is what we have 
very simple and you are probably very familiar with that pattern already. So how can we make that reactive? How can we use Rx Swift? And again, I'm not going into the details of why you should use Rx Swift. You probably know if you want to learn it by now or not. I just want to help you with this video to understand the basic concepts better. So um, first of all, before we get started, we need to install um, Rx Swift to our project. So I'm closing this and what I need to do is opening my terminal. And in my terminal, I'm going to change to this directory here. So I'm switching using change directory, I'm switching to my desktop and I'm switching to Rx Swift start. And in this directory, as you can see, we have our pod file right here. And in this pod file, I've already specified that I'd like to install Rx Swift. So all I need to do is hit pod install right here. And once I hit return on my keyboard, I'm going to install Rx Swift to my project. And since we're using Rx Swift now with CocoaPods, we can no longer open the standard Xcode project file. Instead, we need to open up the Xcode workspace. And this is what I did here. And for this to work now, it's really important, important to build your application or your project one time before hitting the code again. So I'm running build here and I'm opening up my master view controller to see if I can import Rx Swift. So in line 10, right below my import UI kit, I'm now importing Rx Swift, hit build, and we build that successfully. And what we try to achieve now is actually the same thing that we already have. We want to communicate with our detail view controller and we want to get the information did we click on chicken, dog, or goat? And we want to update our hello user lo label accordingly. And we did that already with the delegate pattern. And now we're using Rx Swift to do the same thing, but only the reactive way. So if you have dealt or if you have learned something about Rx Swift already, then you know, then this is all about observing observers, actually, or observing sequences and see when uh, react to the changes or react to events events. And I'm going to import now Rx Swift also to my detail view controller. And I'd like to use a Rx type that um, comes really handy for developers that are not familiar with Rx yet. I'm going to call that selected character variable. And it maybe sounds strange to create a type or create a property that might already be a variable. In that case, it's a let constant, but I'm calling it variable because it is the variable type that I'd like to use. And I also want to give it an initial value that I can state here in the initializer, which for us is just going to be user. And variable is actually a subject, but it is, it is a type that wraps a behavior subject. So if you want to get, go and look that up, you're free to do so. But for us at the moment, it is only important to know that we can observe if this value of this variable changes. And what you can do for good style and also for um, security that you can also only, only access this variable inside this class and that it is not exposed to another class and you might accidentally change that from the master view controller, we can declare that as private. And I'm also doing that because I'm going to show you how we get the observable. We can, because we can now create another variable here, for example, and call it selected character. And this character is going to be of type observable. So we can observe this selected character and see what events are there, what changes are there. And since we're dealing with strings here, I'm also defining that this observable should be of type string. And every time we access selected character, we're simply returning the selected character variable and run the as observable function. And with that, we get our variable, which we can use to change our values. And we get this variable as an observable that we can observe and have a look at the changes that we're making here in the detail view controller or the events that we're actually firing. And we're now continuing to the character selected 
function here. This is triggered every time we're clicking on one of the buttons. And I'm adding comments now here because we're no longer using the delegate pattern. So I can also add comments around my protocol definition and I can also add a comment before or comment out my delegate property. We're no longer use that. And now in our character selected function, we're still getting the character name from the button. But what I'd like to do now is use my selected character variable, access its value and change it to the character name. And having to use the value property of this variable type is just a distinction of this type to actually change its content. And so we are now changing our selected character val uh, variables value to the character name. And the cool thing now is that using the selected character observable, we are exposing this character to listeners or subscribers or observers. And we can do that in the master view controller. And in reactive programming or in RX Swift, there is something that is called a dispose bag. And dispose bag is a tool in RX Swift to help deal with arc and memory management. Also, you can go look that up if you're interested in more about or more details about the dispose bag. But for now, just keep in mind, we need that for memory management. I'm defining that here in my master view controller as a property, let's call it dispose bag and initialize it with a dispose bag. And as you can see, we also have some errors here because there is no longer a a delegate or a character delegate. So I'm add some comments here. And there is also no delegate here for the detail view controller. But what the detail view controller now can do is using the detail view controller and using the selected character property. And this is an observable. So we can observe it using the subscribe function. So what I'd like to do is subscribe for on next event. So every time my selected character changes, I get notified and can make some updates. So for this to work, we only need the closure for on next. We do not need to handle errors. We do not need to listen for the on complete event. Uh, we do not need to listen for on dispose. So I'm selecting them and delete all of that stuff. And here for on next, all we need is a closure and we actually get one parameter here which is our character so the character and what we can also do to make this more safe and to prevent retain cycles we can use weak self here in this closure and then use self greetings label and its text and set this to hello and use string interpolation here and just pass along our character and that's it. And now we talked about this dispose bag. And every time we're um, observing a observable, we should tell it that this should be disposed by our dispose bag. And now I hit build. And I see that the build was successful and I run this in the simulator. And if everything went well, then I should be able to select a dog. And we have hello dog. I can select the chicken, we have hello chicken, and I can select the goat, and we have hello goat. And so you've seen now how easy RX Swift actually can be, and you've seen how we're actually just using the subscribe function here on our observable selected character to listen for next events that are produced every time we are changing the value of our selected character variable. We could also have subscribed to the selector character variable itself and had the exact same effect. But I wanted to show you that the selected character variable is actually a subject that can produce data, but can also consume data. And the selected character observable can just produce data. And with that, we have an observable that we can observe and subscribe to what we did in our master view controller with the property selected character of our detail view controller. And every time something changes, we can update our greetings label.
I hope that this was something of an eye-opener to how um, Rx Swift works in practice and, for example, to communicate between two view controllers. Let me know if you'd like to see more tutorials on Rx Swift. I thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel to not miss any videos. And I'll see you in the next one.